Imagine a world where semiconductors are more valuable than oil, and algorithms hold more power than armies. That world isn't science fiction. It's today. The United States and China are locked in a silent war for control of the technologies shaping the 21st century. Artificial intelligence, advanced chips, and the global supply chains behind them. But what you see in the headlines barely scratches the surface. Behind the noise, there's a deeper story of markets, investments, and geopolitics that few are willing to tell. Today, we uncover the real economic battle changing the future of technology. For decades, America held the crown in tech. Companies like Intel, Qualcomm, Microsoft, and later Nvidia defined the modern digital economy. The U.S. dominated chip design, operating systems, and cloud computing, turning Silicon Valley into the financial powerhouse it is today. But in the last 20 years, China emerged as a challenger, not only producing cheaper hardware, but also pouring massive state-backed investments into semiconductors, AI, and telecommunications. Huawei became the symbol of this rise, once overtaking Apple in smartphone sales and building the infrastructure for 5G networks across dozens of countries. From Washington's perspective, this wasn't just competition, it was a threat. If China controlled the next generation of networks and chips, American dominance in global trade and finance could weaken. That's why we saw sanctions, export bans, and pressure campaigns against Chinese firms, from Huawei and ZTE to more recent restrictions on access to NVIDIA's AI chips. But here's the twist. Every restriction sparked a counter move. Instead of stopping China's progress, these bans pushed Beijing to accelerate its domestic programs. Billions were redirected to companies like SMIC, Yangtze Memory, and other chip makers trying to close the gap. The result? A tech rivalry that now looks more like an economic war. Nvidia's market cap may have soared past $3 trillion on the back of AI demand, but its access to Chinese buyers is shrinking fast. Huawei, written off by many just a few years ago, has bounced back with competitive smartphones powered by its own chips and is pushing aggressively into AI servers. Meanwhile, Intel, once untouchable, is caught in the middle, losing ground in both consumer and data center markets, while facing a resurgent China and a dominant Nvidia. And here's where the story shifts from technology to finance. Investors are watching this rivalry like a high-stakes poker game. Every new sanction, every breakthrough chip, every supply chain disruption sends shockwaves through global markets. Share prices swing, capital flows shift, and entire industries – autos, cloud computing, defense – adjust their strategies. What started as a battle over microchips is now reshaping how money moves across the planet. So when you hear about chip shortages, Huawei's new processor, or Nvidia's explosive earnings, it's not just tech news. It's a window into the broader conflict, a clash of economies, investment strategies, and geopolitical ambitions. And this is only the beginning. At the center of the US-China tech rivalry lies a single product, the semiconductor. These tiny pieces of silicon are the building blocks of artificial intelligence, cloud computing, smartphones, and even modern warfare. Whoever controls the flow of chips controls the flow of power in the digital age. And that's why this market, valued at nearly a trillion dollars, has become the most contested battlefield between Washington and Beijing. Let's start with Nvidia. In the past five years, Nvidia went from being just another chip maker in the gaming space to the undisputed leader of the AI revolution. Its GPUs, especially the H100 and now the Blackwell B200 series, have become the most sought-after processors in the world. Demand from companies like Microsoft, Amazon, and Google turned Nvidia into a Wall Street giant, with its market capitalization surpassing $3 trillion. But here's the catch. A massive chunk of demand also comes from China. Data centers, universities, and AI startups across the country desperately want Nvidia chips and U.S. sanctions have cut them off. On paper, this sounds like a win for Washington. Limit China's access and you slow down its AI ambitions. But reality is more complicated. China isn't sitting idle. It's building alternatives. 
Huawei shocked the world in 2023 when it released the Mate 60 Pro powered by its domestically produced 7 nanometer chip, proving that despite sanctions, its engineers could still deliver competitive products. Since then, Huawei has doubled down, moving into AI servers, cloud solutions, and even challenging NVIDIA directly with its Ascend processors. Then there's Intel. Once the undisputed king of chips, Intel has been losing ground for years. It missed the mobile wave, struggled with manufacturing delays, and now faces an uphill battle to stay relevant in AI. For investors, the contrast is sharp. NVIDIA stock skyrocketed, Intel stumbled, and Huawei, though not publicly traded, has gained prestige and market influence that rivals its American competitors. For global markets, this rivalry means volatility. Taiwanese foundries like TSMC, South Korean giants like Samsung, and Dutch firms like ASML all find themselves in the middle. Supply chains are being redrawn. Capital is shifting. Investors are betting not just on who makes the best chip, but on which geopolitical bloc will dominate production, distribution, and regulation. This is why semiconductors are often called the new oil. They fuel economies, attract investment, and determine strategic independence. And as the US and China clash, the rest of the world is forced to choose sides or risk being cut out of the digital future altogether. When people talk about geopolitics, they usually imagine military alliances, energy pipelines, or global trade routes. But in today's world, the most powerful weapon isn't a missile or a barrel of oil, it's technology. And both Washington and Beijing know it. That's why the tech rivalry has transformed into a geopolitical chess game, where every move is designed to project influence far beyond their own borders. Take 5G networks. A few years ago, Huawei was signing deals in Europe, Africa, and Latin America to build the backbone of global communications. For China, this wasn't just about faster internet, it was about embedding itself into the digital infrastructure of dozens of countries. Washington responded with an all-out campaign to block Huawei equipment, warning allies about security risks and even threatening trade penalties. The result was a divided world map. Some nations leaned toward Chinese-built systems, while others stuck with American or European alternatives. Now the battlefield has expanded to artificial intelligence and semiconductors. By restricting NVIDIA and other US firms from selling advanced AI chips to China, Washington hopes to keep its rival one step behind. But Beijing counters with huge subsidies, talent recruitment, and regional alliances to build its own ecosystem. In this sense, technology is no longer just a business. It's a tool of statecraft. For smaller countries, the stakes are high. Align with the US and you get access to Western chips, cloud services, and capital markets. Align with China and you gain cheaper hardware, faster infrastructure, and often financial support through initiatives like the Belt and Road. Neutrality is increasingly difficult because both superpowers view tech adoption as a measure of loyalty. What makes this even more significant is how deeply technology connects to economic resilience. Whoever sets the standards for AI, quantum computing, or next-generation networks will shape not only profits but also political leverage for decades to come. Just as the US dollar has long been the backbone of global finance, control over digital infrastructure could become the backbone of global governance. This is why the US-China rivalry isn't just about business competition. It's about who writes the rules of the digital future, who has the power to surveil, to protect, or to disrupt. And while headlines often focus on sanctions or product launches, the deeper reality is that technology has become the front line of geopolitics, an invisible battlefield where the winners and losers of the 21st century are being decided. The rivalry between the United States and China might appear to be about politics and national pride, but its most immediate effects are felt in the global economy. Investors, companies, and even consumers are already paying the price for this high-stakes conflict. And unlike military disputes, this battlefield runs straight through the heart of global markets. Start with the supply chains. Semiconductors don't come from one country. They're a web of global cooperation, designed in California, manufactured in Taiwan, assembled in China, tested in Malaysia, and sold worldwide. Disrupt one link in this chain, and the ripple effects spread across continents. The U.S. export bans on advanced chip-making equipment, for example, didn't just hit China. 
They also squeezed Dutch company ASML, Japanese suppliers of chemicals, and even South Korean giants like Samsung. For multinational corporations, every new sanction is a risk factor that could disrupt production, raise costs, or delay innovation. For investors, the volatility is both a threat and an opportunity. NVIDIA's stock soared on the back of unprecedented AI demand, but each new headline about China restrictions adds uncertainty. Intel, struggling to reinvent itself, is betting on government subsidies like the U.S. CHIPS Act to catch up. In Asia, Taiwan's TSMC and South Korea's SK Hynix find themselves in a precarious position, benefiting from Western demand while heavily reliant on Chinese customers. The automotive industry offers a clear example of how far this rivalry reaches. Electric vehicle makers from Tesla to BYD depend on advanced chips to run everything from battery management systems to autonomous driving. When chip supplies tightened during the pandemic, carmakers lost billions in sales. Now, as Washington and Beijing weaponize chip access, automakers fear being caught in the crossfire once again. Then there's capital flow. Wall Street watches every development with laser focus. When the U.S. tightens export controls, investors shift money into companies less exposed to China. When Beijing announces subsidies or breakthroughs, capital floods into Chinese tech funds. This constant tug-of-war creates short-term trading opportunities, but makes long-term strategies far more complex. The risk of decoupling, where the U.S. and China split into two parallel tech ecosystems, could force global investors to choose sides, fundamentally reshaping portfolios. For everyday consumers, the fallout might look like higher smartphone prices, slower access to AI tools, or fewer options for connected devices. But for markets, the consequences run deeper. Higher costs of capital, fragile supply chains, and an unpredictable future. In the end, this rivalry isn't confined to Washington and Beijing. It's a storm shaking the entire global economy. When we step back and look at the bigger picture, one thing becomes crystal clear. Technology has become the new oil of the 21st century. Just as control over energy shaped the geopolitics of the last century, control over chips, AI, and digital infrastructure will define the balance of power in this one. The rivalry between the United States and China is not just a headline. It's the foundation of the world economy we will all live in for decades to come. Every investor, every company, and even every consumer is now part of this story. From NVIDIA's skyrocketing stock to Huawei's defiant comeback, from Intel's struggle to China's relentless push for self-sufficiency, the competition isn't slowing down. If anything, it's accelerating. And the choices made today by governments and corporations alike will shape markets, jobs, and investments for generations. That's why it's so important to stay informed and see beyond the surface-level headlines. On this channel, we dig deeper into the economics, the strategy, and the real consequences behind global events. So if you found this breakdown valuable, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. Because the next chapter in this story is already being written, and you won't want to miss it.